Hello and welcome to the new Weatherlink 2.0 website. In this tutorial, we will be introducing you to the new features of the Weatherlink 2.0 website. When you first come to www.weatherlink.com, you will see this landing page where you will either sign up as a new user and register your device or sign in to go directly to your web page. When you do that, you will come to the bulletin page that displays the current conditions from your device. On this page you have uh, any number of tiles that you can configure and rearrange and resize. For example, the current rain, I can drag to resize it. I can delete a particular tile. I can move a particular tile. This way you can define and customize the look of your current condition bulletin page. On the right side you also have the ability to add and remove any number of tiles. You also have access to what we call a summary page by clicking on this icon here. You will see basically a text version of the same information that you saw on the bulletin page that includes the daily highs and lows. On that note, on the bulletin page, if you hover over any of the particular data values, you will see the highs and lows for that particular value. Now a key difference with the new Weatherlink 2.0 website is the ability to have one username, one login, one account for multiple Davis weather systems. For example, this site here, I've actually got three systems pushing data up to my account and by selecting any one of these I can view the bulletin or chart, look at the data for any one of those, those stations. The weatherlink.com uh, website can accept data from a Weatherlink network subscription, a Weatherlink IP data logger, a Vantage Connect data logger, and the new EnviroMonitor weather station. You can have all of those here displayed under one account and to look at their data individually. So beyond the bulletin, we have the chart page, and that is where you can plot your historical data. Similar to the bulletin page on the right side, I can select and deselect and define what is on the chart page. I can define the span of the chart as well as the start time of the chart. I can also quickly change the span by dragging over the data and it will zoom in uh, and show me that particular set of data. So here I'm displaying only temperature and I'll add humidity by checking the humidity and clicking update. Now I have the humidity and temperature on the chart. You can also customize this page uh, by clicking on the variable up here on the top left. You can define the color. I'll prefer my humidity to be green. I can define whether it's displayed as a line or a bar graph. And I can also temporarily hide uh, that variable from being displayed. On the right, under this gear, I can customize it further by defining whether the axis is displayed for temperature or not, whether I want the temperature axis on the right side, 
and also the range. So I can define that for the temperature, I want it to display between 70 degrees and 40 degrees. And if I click Apply Changes, you will see now that the temperature y-axis is now on the right side and its range is from 40 to 70 degrees. All these changes you make, whether in the bulletin or the chart or the data tab, um, are saved to the account. So once you make those changes, they stay that way until you change them. So my humidity will always be green. The location of my tiles on the bulletin page will stay where they are every time I come to the site until I change them. We also have the data tab that will show us the raw numbers for all the data coming from my station. That is definable just like on the chart page by a drop down for the start date and the span. In addition, on the data page, I can export this data by clicking this icon here. Uh, when I click on this icon, it will ask me for an email address. And then once I click send, the data in a text file, a comma separated text file, will be emailed to that address. And the data that is sent is defined by this range here. So I basically exported an email text data for uh, November 21st, just the, just the one day. We also have a map page that will show uh, other users' weather data. Uh, by clicking on an icon, you can dis display, let's find one. By clicking on an icon, you can display their couple of their variables, and by clicking on this bulletin button, you can jump to their bulletin page. You don't have access to their data. And you can't chart their data, but you can see their current conditions. Unless, of course, they've made their station private, and then they will not show up on the map at all. So I want to go back to my station. So I click on the top right drop down. The last tab, the mobilize tab, is where you can look at views of your data. Uh, these views, as we call them, are created in the Davis Mobilize app. Uh, the app is available in the uh, Apple App Store and the Google Play Store. And with that app, you can define views and within the views any one of four different reports. Uh, there's a weather report. That's one we see here. There's also an irrigation report that will use soil moisture sensors and pressure switches and pressure sensor, sensors, flow meters, things of that nature to monitor the uh, irrigation on your farm. Uh, there's also a crop report that will use a temperature probe to calculate degree days to monitor the crop's life cycle. And there's also a frost report that also uses any temperature probe to determine if there's uh, any risk of frost uh, coming, coming up in the future. Those are only created with that Mobilize app. And then you can view them in the Mobilize app as well as view them here. Uh, but on the weatherlink.com webpage, you can't edit or change them. That must be done on the Mobilize app. So in this weather view here, we can see current conditions from my sensor suite that I've chosen to use for this report. Uh, and then I have two graphs I can look at, a temperature and a rain chart. On the temperature chart, this is my logged temperature data as well as the highs and lows from my station. And after this dashed line uh, into the future, it's a forecast of what temperature we can expect to come in the future. For the rain chart, we've got a line showing the monthly rain totals and a bar graph uh, whenever any daily rain occurs. 
Similarly, after this dashed line, it's a forecast for what we expect in the future. It's clear here for the next three and a half days, there's no, no rain forecast. These drop downs here are a little bit different than from the prior tabs. Instead of showing all the stations I own and, and, and can look at, uh, this lists all the different view names that I've created. Um, so I'm right now looking at the one I've named Weather. Now on the right side, it's not uh, check boxes of data that I want to see, but it's rather alert thresholds that I've set using the Mobilize app. So in the Mobilize app, I've set these thresholds. If any of them are met or exceeded, um, this header over here will turn orange. Likewise, um, items in the Mobilize app will also turn orange, notifying you that an alert has been met. And over here, the particular alert that has been triggered will also be orange. It's a way of sensing, sensing if any of these uh, thresholds that I've defined have exceed, been exceeded. And that's the Mobilize tab. In the top right here, we see a uh, first and last name, a picture. We have a user account icon here where you can change and view the user account information. On the right side here, you can change the units of measure. You can also change the display format, whether it's 24 hour clock, uh, a tenth of a degree resolution for temperature, or European date format, things of that nature. The wrench on the top right takes me to device info. So any number of my stations here, I can select a particular device and see its latitude and longitude, enter notes, add pictures, change the station name, etc. Uh, also under the wrench page, let me go back there, you have a notification and upload tab. Uh, in the notification and upload tab, uh, you can define where information is sent um, to, to either other users or to third-party websites. Under the notifications, you can define daily summary emails that will go to an email address you enter here at a time that you specify here. Um, the email notifications and the text notifications define who gets emails when an alarm condition is met whether it's a Vantage Connect or a Weatherlink IP or Weatherlink Network Subscription, um, the alarms you've defined, when they trigger, uh, say, getting above 80 degrees Fahrenheit, either an email or a text will be sent to the following people that you've added uh, to these pages. The Upload tab defines some third-party websites that you can send your data to. We have Weather Underground, the Globe Network, and the CWOP, the Citizens Weather Observer Program. And that about wraps it up for the weatherlink.com tutorial. Uh, we hope you enjoy it and we hope you have a happy weather watching future.